is so fancy Nancy otherwise known as Nancy today I'm going to make a decoration for Christmas by using some things that I have around the house I like to make my ornaments I have several trees at Christmas time but I think my family's favorite tree is the one where we've made Christmas ornaments throughout the years so today we're going to make this little ornament and it is so so cute I'm not completely done with it but this is the hardest part of the work I began this tr this track looking for this fabric like this ribbon here I think it's called Buffalo or maybe even Lumberjack but I went to every Joanne I went to Walmart Hobby Lobby I've been everywhere looking for the fabric so I really couldn't find it and I came home really disgusted because I couldn't find it anyway I found this in my stash this fabric and I'm going to show you how I cut all these little bitty strips and how I put this little ornament together now we're going to decorate it when we're through so right now this is just the bare minimum of the work so what you're going to need for this project will be these guys and if you're old school like me you'll know what these guys are they're actually canning lids that fasten your top to your food that you're preserving so we're going to use these I found these in an estate sale I think I paid like 10 cents for them so they're not quite shiny all the way around you can tell they've been used but I like to make things pretty again so you need these guys you need one they're different sizes and we're going to use this size right here the smaller size going to need some fabric which is this fabric right here I'm going to use this fabric to tear so I can show you how I actually cut the little pieces so that you understand how the fabric became frayed on this so I am going to use this for some ornaments but just as an accent color because I really go for the the reds and the hunter greens on my Christmas tree so let's get started okay using this fabric here we're going to cut or tear whichever one you want to do but me personally I'm not a measurer per se so I kind of eyeball it and then what we're gonna do we're gonna open this up and I'm gonna count down one two three four lines on this fabric right here and I'm going to cut it just a little smidge like that one two three four cut it again and some people might ask why this width I'll show you at the end why I chose this width and how it kind of helps take up the actual perimeter of the canning ring and the first few that I made were so small that it took me forever to fill up this ring so what I decided to do was do one that had a wider strip and that would take up a little bit more room so I came down cut some more fabric and and cut but what I what I'll do is I'll go all the way down one two three four cutting like this one two three four and cutting like this on down okay now when I'm all the way at the end of the fabric this is what I'll do and this is old school my grandmother did this my granny did this whenever they were going to cut fabric when you tear like this it will tear in a straight line so we're going to go all the way down tearing like this until we get to the very end of the fabric all the way down okay now now that you've seen this you just sit your strips aside until you're completely done so I have a bag here that I'll show you that 
I did for this fabric and this is a lot of fabric and you will see these were the ones that I cut that were super small so I'm gonna have to figure something out maybe two at a time okay guys I'm back I had to run let the puppies out so what we're gonna do is we're going to take this ring and we're gonna tie these guys all the way around this ring now you can do this a bunch of different ways depending on how you want to cut your fabric now you saw earlier that I just tore and made my strips I am NOT going to cut them the first ones I did I cut like that and made them smaller which was a pain for me I had rheumatoid arthritis in my hands and it's really hard for me to work teeny tiny knots like that so what I decided to do was to leave the strips long, bring them around all the way down, which it gives me something to hold on to, and it gives me something to pull on. It gives me a longer, that's all you got to do, tie it with this longer tip down here, and you're going to have tons of strings you'll have strings all over the place it actually looked like it rained crimson which it's not too bad in Alabama we're huge Alabama fans so crimson we have everywhere so I tied it one time and cut I'm going to tie it again this is going to be our second knot okay we're going to pull really tight 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 okay now you will see you have a little bitty knot right there and you see right here we have two of the many little tabs that will be on your little Christmas ornament now these are uneven and they will be uneven so by the end of the ornament what we'll do is kind of trim it off so that it's kind of even all the way around so I'm going to sit here and hopefully get this all done for you and give you an idea of what this green looks like when it's all tied up and it is so so cute so if you'll bear with me I will work and try to get all this done and then by the end of this we'll have a pretty green and black lumberjack Christmas ornament okay guys we're all done tying and this to me i am looking at this and i'm thinking oh this is not what i thought it was going to turn out to be but i have not done the clipping remember in the beginning of the video i said the reason that i made the strips wider was to and I would tell you at the end or do something else at the end of the video okay the reason I did it, the strips wider was so that it would take up more room here and not have to use so many and two it would allow us to trim off and make it the way the shape that we want but most importantly it would allow us to make these thinner so what I did was pull out these little guys like this and cut them now I'm not real happy with the um, the way the color is turning out but I think once then we get all of the decorations on it and everything it'll redeem itself and two this is a primitive type ornament that would be made you know very quickly possibly by children older people like myself with rheumatoid arthritis so it would you know take you a little bit of time this took me probably about 30 minutes and you'll see here that I'm kind of trimming it off some so that it kind of shapes it up now what I'm doing is I'm looking as I cut at these guys here you see right here where I began cutting you need to make sure that you get all the sides and you probably might when you first do this put this down like this and trim it that way 
and try to use some really good fabric scissors because the larger they are the better the cut and the quicker the cut so I'm trimming this off as I go around and I'm not wasting a lot of fabric I'm just rounding it up now some of it gets tucked in and so it might take a couple of times around to get the see I have to pick it up it, it, I, I'm, I'm moving on I like to get things done and move on but when you first began doing this you probably need to lay it down like this and snip but I've done a lot of these things see like this little guy right here was tucked away let's bring him out here see here's where we cut and there he was tucked away so we're going to chop this one was too let's cut it off okay that one was okay and I'm kind of eyeballing it and it's hard sometimes to give an actual guesstimation how many of these little strips you need but the fabric that we used was a quarter yard of fabric so after I finish all of these guys after they're all made and put together I can give you maybe a guesstimation on number and how many will come with that fabric now this fabric here was left over from a, I think I made my daughter a Christmas dress out of it and I actually made well I began making myself a Christmas dress we were gonna match be all matchy matchy you know my mom and daughter but I didn't get it done so at least she looked cute for Christmas so this fabric turned out to be what I was looking for and you can see these little guys here all the little stringies they will eventually stop being a stringy but it give the kids something to do get them to sit down and pull all the stringies off anyway back to the green after we are done clipping it I'm digressing there um, let's see pull it out and let's fluff it up see how this gets tucked away over here so some of these guys yep they got left out okay you could kind of pull them together like this and tell kind of see there we go and if they're all even in the symmetrical look will be really nice to get it all done this little guy's out whoops missed those guys okay now I'm going to snip them and it was going to take me a little bit because I'm going to go down and do all of these guys and see if I can turn them around a little bit more and then that way maybe instead of seeing the white we'll be able to see a little bit of the green as well so I'll be right back guys in my stash their little reindeer so I decided to see maybe if we could put this on one of these ornaments and see what it looks like I'm not going to paint it for detail but I am gonna sprinkle some white iridescent glitter on him and see what he looks like I'm gonna do two 
so we'll see what it looks like and then I can decide if that's that's what I'm gonna do but I thought he was really cute I know I said I was at the end but um, I guess I can change my mind right okay let's see I guess I wasn't quite prepared. I thought I was, but I guess not. But I love this super, super, super fine glitter, and I get it at Hobby Lobby. I put glitter on just about everything. It makes it shiny and pretty. There's one, and here's the other. And I'm gonna flip him over so that they're mirror imaged and they're not um, going in the same direction. That's what mirror image means but uh super cute thought i would add it to the little ornaments and we'll see what these guys look like after i add this on there i kind of like to figure things out as i go i get an idea in my mind and i think oh that'll be cute and then it all kind of falls into place now while these guys are drying, and I'm going to leave that iridescent glue, glitter, I've painted Mod Podge on them, which is super sticky, and I'm going to leave that super fine glitter on here. It's crystal glitter, uh, fabric art, uh, gold fine dust, stamp, stampinius, stampinius, sorry, that's how I'm reading it. So, but I use lots and lots and lots of this stuff. So I'm gonna move this over and uh, my sister sent me a text and I was telling her what I was doing and she said, well, why don't you show them what it looks like to hot glue the decorations on this. I thought, my, that makes sense. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna put these guys away. I'm going to plug the glue, glue gun up and then we'll put it together with the hot glue gun. I got my little tiny glue gun out. Uh, the larger ones are hotter than the Dickens, so I decided since maybe some little people might be involved, I would just use the smaller one, and then that way it would give you a better idea of uh, size. So what I did is I spread this the the ties all the way around, open like this. Whoops! There's my Sadie, my German Shepherd my guard dog I think she hears somebody so I'm gonna gather this around and tie it like this and pull it super tight I have their knot right there okay see so this moves back and forth so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna close this up well, let's put a little dot of glue in there. Maybe it won't. There we go. Put a little dot of glue on that. Close this up. There we go. Now, you need to space these out pretty evenly so you don't have them bunched up. And it's still super stringy. So the fun part of this is, you know, sitting and pulling these little guys out or cutting them out, whichever one you'd like to do. Uh, not all of them are stringy like this, but some of them are, some of them aren't. Okay, so we've got our string on there. It's twirling pretty good for our Christmas tree. Okay, so we're going to decide what side we need to put this guy on. And I'm thinking probably this side because we've got more of the dark green showing so let's put this guy down like this pull the strings up so that it's taut like that and let me here is the bow remember i said we used the floral wire to make the bow so i'm going to wrap this around a little bit more so maybe this bow doesn't come undone do one way, two, okay, and then we're going to snip these off so they don't cut somebody. 
primarily me. I get scratches everywhere from doing crafts. Okay. Got these guys. Gonna fluff up this bow. Now this still has the wire in it. Remember I cut it up the center. So the wire is in it and allows you to fluff it and make it nice and pretty like that. So we're gonna, let's see, put a little bit. Okay. Need something to poke this baby down with. I'll use my boner. Okay, this seems to be working. Okay, you want your string to stay up. Ooh, that's hot. Okay. Pushing down on that. Seems to be holding pretty good. That's awesome. Okay, so we've got the string. And then we've got the bow on there. Twirling pretty good. Okay, I do see a little uh, of the residual there from the glue stick, but I guess if we put these little guys in there, you won't really see them. So I'm going to turn these over to where it has the little loop there. Put a little glue on that. Drop it down. This might be the way to go. But I do know when metal gets cold and you use the glue gun, it does peel away. So I'm going to try to get that down in the hole there so maybe it won't come undone. Uh oh, alright. Well, that was very quick. Let me get my little... There we go. That's the glue gun version right here. This is... The wire version. So, wire, glue gun. So, I may have to switch over to this glue gun. Turned out pretty good, pretty quick. So, I now use the little bitty one too. So, that might have to think about that before I get in mass production. <music>